Hey everyone, welcome back. In this video, I'll be showing you how I set up my habit trackers and progress bars in Notion. So here we have my current landing page for my planners. And today I'm looking to add a habit tracker in here to track my habits and goals on a monthly basis. So the first thing I need to do is create a new table database to store my list of habits. Then I'll just give it a name called Monthly Habits Summary so I know what it's called when I need to reference it. Now this step is optional but I'm just putting the table in a toggle to make sure the page looks a little bit neater. And just hiding the table title as well as we don't need to see that twice. So now that I have my first table created, we'll be setting up some columns. So first I want to rename the name title to be called Habit. And so for example, a habit for me would be study Japanese. Next I'll just go ahead and delete this tags column because we don't really need that for now. I'll add a number column called Monthly Goals, which is essentially how many times a month I'm aiming to do the habit. So here I'm aiming to study Japanese roughly around 20 times a month, so I've entered 20 in the cell. Next I'll add a roll-up column called Actuals as a placeholder which we'll come back to later. And then a formula column called Progress which we'll come back to later as well. Next another column called Progress Bar. And finally, the last column we'll be adding to this table will be a multi-select column called month. The second database we'll be creating is a weekly habits tracker. So same thing as before, add a new table view and then click on add new database. Give it a name so it's easy to reference. I'll be naming my weekly habit tracker. And then again, hiding the database table like last time for a cleaner look. Now I'm ready to set up my columns for the second table. In this table, every row will be a daily habit diary entry. We'll start by deleting this tags column. And then leave the name column as is. Each habit will be set up as a checkbox column so I can tick it off as I complete the daily habit. My first habit column will be studying Japanese so I gave it a little Japanese flag emoji. And then we'll do the same thing and create another checkbox column for gymming. So a really important thing to remember here is that for each habit in your habit tracker, we'll need to have a corresponding habit in the habit summary table above in order to set up progress tracking later. Since each row in this weekly habit tracker is a daily entry, this means that we'll need to add a new row every day. But it's actually really manual to have to make a new row with a title every single day. So we'll make it easier by using a page template that will generate automatically an entry every day. So in the top right of this table, there's a little drop down next to the blue new button and this will let me create a new page template. I'll make the title for the template called Daily Habits and then I'll set this template to be as the default. Then in the repeat setting, I'll set it to create a new row every day at 12am. Next, I'll add a created time column to track which days the entries are for. And just a quick note, the reason why I'm using created time instead of date is that if I use the date column after manually enter the date, whereas if I use created time, the date will actually automatically populate for me. However, the created time column does look a little bit too intense and long for our purposes. So here, I'm just creating another formula column to display just the day of the week. And 
now that we have a column that displays the day of the week, I can now hide the created time column and just shuffle my columns around a little bit so my table makes more sense. And the last column to add is a relations column which links our weekly habit tracker to our monthly habit summary. This step is super important because linking the two tables together will let us create our habit progress bars in a second. For now, we'll just need to unhide the month property so we can choose habits from the right month. I just want to mention that this step is also optional and it's only applicable for if you want to track your progress on a monthly basis. So for example, if I put June on top here, then I can see the June tag also down in here. So I'll know that I'm linking the right habits from the right month. Now onto progress bars. So let's say for example, on Sunday, I completed my Japanese studying. What I need to do is manually select study Japanese in the habits relation column. This will add one entry into the habits summary table for studying Japanese on the top. We've verified this relationship is working. We can go ahead and hide this weekly habits tracker column because we know that it's working in the background. So now we're ready to configure the roll-up column we created earlier. This roll-up column will basically count how many times we've completed a particular habit. We can verify that it's working here as there's one checked box for Japanese and the number for actual for the Japanese row is also one. Now that we have our monthly goal and actual column set up, we are ready to make our progress bars. I want the progress bar to show me the percentage of my goal achieved every time I tick a box. This is the formula I used to get a neat looking percentage. And to turn the percentage into a progress bar, I'll just head into edit properties for that particular progress column and click on bar. Another way I'm thinking of making a progress bar is a little bit more complicated, but I think it's more aesthetic, so here we go. So this version basically lets you update your progress bars in 10% increments. And what's neat is that you can use any emoji you like to represent those increments, so you can be as creative as you want. I'm using filled in hearts to represent the completed increments and empty hearts for the remaining percentages. If you want to do this but with different emojis, all you have to do is replace the symbols in between the quotation marks in the equation with whatever emojis you want. For this habit tracker, I like the version with the hearts better. I'll just go ahead and hide the bar column. And finally, just quickly testing to make sure my hearts feel in properly when I tick additional habits. Seems to be working, perfect. Now I'll just be adding on a few filters to make it a monthly view. Because I'm in June at the moment, I'll just be filtering for any record that is tagged for June 23. And on the bottom habit tracker table, I'll just be filtering to show only rows for the current week. I forgot to do it here, but you can also sort your created time in ascending order as well. Since I have a weekly planner for every week, it's really useful to have the habit tracker directly in the planner itself. But having to insert the habit tracker into the planner manually every week is a bit annoying. So I'll be inserting the habit tracker into the weekly planner template instead. By doing it this way, every time a new weekly planner is created, the habit tracker would be already inserted in there for me so I don't have to do it manually myself. So now when we open up a new weekly planner page, the habit tracker will be already in there for me to use. And that's the end of this video. See you next time!